Hello, dear friends. Hello, my colleagues. Hello, everyone who love to hear and watch us. Today, I have a really special guest. We know each other a really long time, but somehow we don't have chance really to talk about everything. And I don't have time to spending time in London like it was before in the my young ballerina's period when I'm just starting to traveling a lot. So I want to introduce very, very nice person, wonderful dancer and today big boss. <laughs> so this is my dear friend, Kevin O'Hare. Thank Very you good. to be with me today. Thank you to Founded Time. And I know this is so hard period for everyone because we are in the pandemic situation. Thank you, darling, to Founded this time one more time. And I want to say hello. Hello, Nina. I'm so thrilled to be here opposite you. And uh, as you say, we've known each other a long time and uh, I had the honor of dancing with you. So a very special moment in my time as a dancer. And then we've, over the years, we've met each other in various places across the world, haven't we? Um, at different conferences, different performances. So it's lovely to have this moment when it's nice to reconnect with friends. Yeah, so Kevin, you are now really have big position. One of important, uh, I can say in the ballet world, this is a real uh, ballet, Covent Garden. You are um, directing, uh, you are artistic director of uh, ballet. So, in what situation you have now? I mean, because all world is upside down. Yes, yeah, it's, it has been a crazy world for everybody. And in one way, that's been fantastic because it's really united us as a group and uh, we're all talking to each other a lot through Zoom, through uh, internet. Um, but uh, for ourselves, um, we stopped dancing, performing on the 12th of March, um, so which seems a long time ago. We had just uh, opened uh, the first revival of our new production, which was only two years old, of Swan Lake. I was very keen to, to have a new Swan Lake for the, this generation of dancers. And uh, so it was very exciting to bring it back. And so we'd had five or six performances before the 12th. And I have to say, you know, as, as you know, things were getting out, we obviously heard about our colleagues in Asia, and then of, of course, Italy and uh, France. And so we, we could sense something was happening. And we had this amazing performance, which was the, actually, we were, that performance happened to be the original cast. So it was led by Marianella Nunez and uh, Vadim Muntigirov. And, and it was a really special performance. The whole company sort of danced their heart out. The audience were crazy. They were, as soon as Marcelino Sambe was uh, Benno, as soon as he finished his solo, they were cheering, clapping. And at the end, everybody was just standing and nobody wanted to come to this show. And I still feel quite emotional when I think about it because it was very, very special to see, you know, what we have all, as we all do, work for these performances and know that we didn't know then how long we would, it would be till we were next on stage. So a sad time, but uh, amazing to finish with that moment uh, until the next time we're on stage. Yeah, you know, this is, a, I mean, similar. We also close our season in Tbilisi, like 14 of, uh, not the season, because it was our last general rehearsal, Medeo, Yuri Fosakov stage for us. And that's it. So since that, we was close. We just start working. Uh, we do classes. Uh, we also have regulation. I think you two also have regulation. And uh, let's go a little bit. Uh, how you generally, I know in the classes a lot of people. So are you have some dress code when people do classes? And uh, what do you think? Discipline in the classes, discipline in your company is important. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's interesting because we're really the first people to come back into the opera house, you know, so the technicians are not here, the opera singers are not here, the uh, administrative staff are not here. And so when we were talking about how we start to get people back into the building, I said, the best people to start with are ballet dancers, because they used to be uh, disciplined. And, and when you ask them to do certain things, they will do that, you know. And so it's been very interesting. And we're now on week two of the dancers coming back. We're just training because the government are helping with payments until we can start performing. Mm. So we are just training, no, no rehearsals. But they're all coming in and we do, we have about 12 people. You, yeah. know, you know what our studios are like, they're very big. So we're amazing. And so each person has a four meter box for the bar, uh, but they're wet, they, they wear their ballet clothes underneath their normal clothes. So we don't use the changing rooms. We come to the top floor of the opera house, take the, those clothes off, straight into the studio. We all wearing masks, yeah. Yeah. and uh, but we are doing. And so there's a teacher in one studio, and then in the other two we are filming. So they they see they just hear and see on the on the screen, and we do that twice a day. So we've managed to nearly sixty dancers. If there were certain dancers that are in places where they can rehearse them, you know, do class themselves. So for instance, even though America is still having problems, um, for instance, Sarah Lamb has, uh, is in um, uh, Martha's Vineyard. Um, somebody has lent her a studio. So she walks to the studio, she's on her own. She misses her colleagues, but it's nice that she can do that until September. So, um, Touch wood, is there some wood here? It, it is going very well. And we're hoping that maybe we can get the classes that the more people can join in together. But at the moment, everybody, and as you say, the discipline, they're doing exactly what they should do and it's all working very well. Now, Kevin, and tell me please, are you making plan from next season, even we don't know what kind of situation we have and how it will be? <laughs> so yes, I Probably like you, I have about a hundred plans of different variations. <laughs> plan one, plan B, plan C, plan D. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And I think we are all in the same situation. So yes, there's, there's things that we can do, whether it's small scale. And the first thing is whether we can touch each other. Yeah. So that's, we, at the moment, we can't. So of course, then uh, we, we could only use people that are couples within the company to dance part of theirs. So I, we did three concerts from the Opera House stage um, last month. They were mainly opera performances because, of course, as you know, the dancers need to be in the studios to rehearse and work. But we managed to do some pas de deux with people that are couples in real life. And so that worked well. And so those are the first ideas. Second ideas are to do small performances, maybe like with one one ballet from a triple bill and some opera so we can mix and so that would be nice to get both companies back on the stage and maybe stream that on the internet and then you know and then we go as as you know nutcracker can we do it even maybe without children uh, if we ha if we weren't able to use the children from the school but we will, you know, we've got lots of different ideas of how we can get away with that. And, and maybe how, what I would love is where if we allow people to come into the building and they can have an experience, that it's even, it doesn't feel like a, a, a poor version of what we normally do. It will feel like an exciting version and, and we can make it exciting for the audience. Yeah, this is amazing because, you know, so far, I don't know how it's possible. So all these come if they need to also to have this uh, um, spacing and how they can sit and watch. It's also big questions for me and how, how long time it takes. So each person comes and they make a temperature. So like hands, so how long time it needs to come at the theater. So it's a lot of questions.
show. Yes. It's but, interesting just to say um, that Andrew Lloyd Webber, you know, the composer, yes. he has been he has been brilliant, and he is um, tomorrow night at the Palladium, which is one of the biggest theatres in London. Yeah. As big as the Opera House, and it's seating wise, he is piloting a version of how to get people in. So a full audience, and I think they're going to do. Um, uh, disinfect and temperature and, and so some of our team are going to see it to see how it works so Wonderful. please if uh, if uh, send it to me when i can see this because i'm so interesting <laughs> to, to check this. so okay now i really want to jump from beginning so your life career how you became Mm, ballet dancer. I ask this question for everyone because a lot of people know us today, but they mm. don't know what and how we start. Who, who yeah. took you at the ballet school? Yeah, well mine was, I think it happens quite often with, uh, with boys, um, but actually mine had an extra thing in it, which was, you know, my sister, we have an older sister, and so like all little girls, especially at that time, went to ballet class. But it was sort of unusual. My sister is uh, a, a, a few years older than me. And then my brother is also quite a few years older. And so they were very close in age. And so my mother said to my brother, go and watch your sister doing ballet class. You know, she was like, he was like five years old. And unusually, because it was a very small town in England, it was a male ballet teacher. And so he said to my little brother, who's, uh, my, who's my older brother, he said, um, uh, why didn't you do dance as well? Why didn't you get up? And so Michael got up and danced and did some lessons. And within months, he was in a competition and won the cup and, you know, all of those things that we've all done. And so when I came along five years later, it was sort of like the hobby, you know, what we would do. And of course, my sister stopped dancing and my brother and I carried on dancing. And so we did a lot of, when we were younger, we did a lot of different types of dancing. So tap dancing, song and dance. And we did mod, what they called modern dancing then. We were even in some television programs. I was even in a, uh, uh, a movie. I, there's a, it was quite a famous well-known movie at the time. It was called Bugsy Malone. And it was all kids dancing, but acting like um, characters from the 1920s mm. and so I thought I wanted to be in you know musicals and, and films and that sort of thing and then suddenly I started to see ballet and uh, was, was realized that I actually really liked it and uh, somebody happened to be at a course I was there and said you should audition for the Royal Ballet School and so and very unusually my brother auditioned he was 16 and he got into the upper school of the Royal Ballet School, and I got into the lower school of the Royal Ballet School. So we both joined the Royal Ballet School on the same day. And uh, so, so lovely to have a sibling, you know, to be uh, in the same career. It's amazing. So it's very rare when brothers decided to, and to continue together. It's amazing. And you see, this is you, you say you are in the film also. It's interesting. I also was when I was little in the film. And, uh, you know, it was very funny when I was like mm, in the first class in the ballet school, they recognized me because I was in the movie. So yes. it's, it's, it's <laughs> so interesting. And uh, tell me, please, for your life career, your teacher, you can name somebody who was important for you because a lot of dancers, for me, the teacher was very important. So who raised me. And then I moved to Moscow and I'm so lucky for this. So do you have this one person who can say it helps you to your life beginning? Yeah, it is interesting, isn't it? Because, and especially in Russia, isn't it? You, it's such a thing, isn't it? Because that teacher becomes your teacher nearly for your career, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. which is incredible I would say the person that probably I had some I had lots of very good teachers but the one person that was very um, instrumental in in for me I think and when I was when I was 16 17 I was very small I was still like not even five foot tall and they were very worried that I wouldn't grow you know and I wouldn't be tall you know and for a ballet dancer and all 
And then suddenly, when I was 16, 17, I grew. So I was quite skinny and, you know, sort of could dance a bit, but it was still needed coordination. And, and then I, you know, and I sort of, I was nervous of being a, a partner, you know, because I was little and not very muscly and all this. And anyway, there's Michael Soames, who was, you know, Margaret Fontaine's first partner. And by this point... I know personally him. I was yeah. so lucky to meet yeah. him in my life. And he, um, he decided he thought I had talent. And so um, I remember, I can see the day when he first saw me. Do you remember in the studios in Barron's Court, there was that studio with the big window yes. that you could look through? Yes. And I was, I was, I think, at the beginning of my graduate year, and I was doing class, and I could, you could still, you know, and of course, all the famous dancers would walk yeah. apart. Yeah. And I could see him there, and he was a coach then, and he was going, and he wasn't very subtle. He's like, who's that one? <laughs> who's that person like this? And I could hear somebody saying, oh, he's one of the graduates. And uh, so he gave, uh, taught me how to be a partner, taught me how to dance. And for the school performance, I did uh, The Sleeping Beauty with Viviana Durante. And, uh, and he really taught me how to be a good partner and how to be, how to be on stage. And he really cared and, and he was scary, very scary. <laughs> and, you know, literally we would walk on to do the first step. Of, no, 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 go back, start again. You don't look like a prince. You don't look like this, you know. You know, this is, uh, I can say, dude, I'm really lucky to meet him personally. Uh, even he was really old, you see this energy because he was so energetic person. And it was rehearsal in the Barnes Court where I rehearsed. And then one second he stopped company and say, do you know who was Vachtang Chabukiani? Everybody was quiet. I was so shocked because I said, oh my God, this is question young generation never know. Then she says, do you know who was Marina Simeonova? Everybody was again quiet, you know. And then Raisa Zdruchkova. And then he was, oh my God, you are a young generation. You don't know anybody. <laughs> and then I was so pleased because he named this great, um, that time Soviet, uh, Russian, uh, I mean, really uh, incredible people. And Bakhtang Chabukiani also teach me, Marina teach me, Struchkova, all of these people was my teacher, you know. Uh, and then he, yes, and he says, so you must go and look and you must read about these people because these people create what we're doing today. Yes. And it was really incredible. And, was uh, that when you did the Firebird? Yes, and uh, this is, uh, it's um, really, Really, even before Firebird, I think before Firebird, he was in the rehearsal. Um, so what I want to ask you a question, uh, partnering, partners. Vivian Duran, this is my generation. We, we were same time, the Opera House. Um, uh, how important this for you? I think it's, it's so important. I mean, it was, uh, and, it was interesting because he taught me how, you know, because when you're young, all you're thinking about is your solo and, you know, your pirouettes and your jump and your, you know, all of that, your technique. And then he taught me to actually enjoy showing the, your partner off and, and, and taking pleasure in that and making it work. So it was absolutely together as one. And uh, and I he somehow he the way he told it clicked like this, and so from being somebody that was very scared or nervous about partnering and sort of not enjoying it, it became the highlight in a way nearly even more important to me than if the the solo worked or the whatever. I'd be so happy when the part of worked well. So darling, I know you when you was really, really young, I can, cannot say exactly how young you was that time. I was also young, but um, we danced together in Birmingham Royal Ballet, Kenneth McMillan, Stroma and Juliet. I have wonderful pictures, so I will send it to you if you don't have. So, and uh, this was amazing because uh, I can say it was like first time I'm dancing with, um, 
um, principal dancer for other companies, like this new, totally new role for me. Because Romeo and Juliet was Macmillan's version, totally different than what I do before. So, and um, uh, you remember, I was really lucky, and uh, Kenneth, Sir Kenneth Macmillan was sitting in the rehearsal. He was rehearsing with us. And it was an amazing time. I really loved spending with him time. He became, I, I feel like my friend because uh, any chance we have to talk or do so, we always uh, uh, enjoy. And if you remember this one little thing, so when it was in the company, we were sitting like several cast, and, and then he says, Nina, please, show me how Russian is running. Like, like uh, this is Juleta's famous run, you know, like Ulan. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so shocked because I never danced before this uh, uh, Lavrovsky's uh, Romeo and Juliet. And I said, what I need to do? He just said, just run. <laughs> I was <laughs> running on the studio. <laughs> and he says, do you see? This is run, just run. It was a busy memory I have about yeah. it. And you are incredible partner because, you know, we don't have a lot of rehearsals. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I think this performance is what we did it together. It was very important for me, very emotional. How do you feel yourself? I'm interested now, your feeling. <laughs> well, it was, it was quite something. And I, I remember um, Kenneth phoning me up and saying, uh, I, 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 it was in the evening, and we, I, I, I can't remember how long did we have before it? It was like four or five days, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he said, um, I've been looking for you, you know, I've got to tell you something. And I was like, what? And then he's like, I want you to dance with Nina, I should really. And I, I think I was speechless. I, I have to say, I was speechless. And it was quite amazing, because of course you'd come in as a guest star, and sadly, you know, your partner had been, uh, it became injured. And uh, so it was, it, was, it was quite a moment, I have to say. And as I say, it was a highlight, it, one of the highlights of my career, you know, it was an amazing moment, you know, that you mm. just, and, and you were very, you know, and I'm not saying that just because I'm different to you now, but you were very kind and very easy. You know, you were like, oh, let's go. I remember going into the studio, let's get on with it, let's do this, you know. And, uh, and of course it was a new, because it was a new production, it was new to me as well. Um, at least I had grown up on that version. I'd seen it a lot of times. You know? Yeah, you know, this is absolutely because uh, uh, we work with Alexei Fadechi, why you jumped in, I want to explain our uh, audience who were listening. And Alexei injured his knee. And even Kenneth tried to change some leaves. You remember this in the knee. And Kenneth says, yes, Alexei, please change these leaves. So try to do something else. But then his knee was totally, totally bad. He cannot dance. And then we decided this. So who, who, who? And then Kenneth said, just give me time. <laughs> one second <laughs> I think this was like he called you but I, I really feeling comfortable with you I'm really feeling all this that does, does not see we don't have short time or yes. uh, even you know I really found it to magazines so what they are writing about you mm. about us so my, my oh, father God. collected all my uh. so <laughs> I don't remember I, at that time I was yeah. not reading in English so I don't remember but I'm sure it was good reviews <laughs> <laughs> we'll say they were good yeah. <laughs> it, because it was um, it was really new production because we have uh, new decoration, new costumes, and it was very talented uh, young uh, uh, Andrew. You remember this? Yes, uh, yeah. Who sadly died? You know, very young. Yeah, you very, it's yeah. and you know this is amazing. So thanks God. I, I when he was live, I say to him, if I like it, his costume, can I use it? And he says, yes, you know, of course. And I was dancing with his costumes even in my production. Oh wow! Amazing. Yeah, he was oh. amazing, you know how yeah. he listened and how he worked with us. Because sometimes we know when design, design, they don't thinking mm -hmm. about we are yes. feeling comfortable. But he was really talented. This is also um, uh, he founded him. He was just I think yes. a student. So this he was in college. Yeah, he was in the college. And what was interesting about it, though, because you know because the production had already was there, kind of choreographed it, but he somehow, 
he made it very different from the one that we do here at the Opera House, and which is very heavy and very, it's a beautiful production, but it's big. And, and this one was so light and you felt the air and the, the youth of the story in it, Absolutely. didn't you? And I, and I think it was really lovely the way he... Absolutely, it was really nice. And then I danced this, uh, I mean, a different, um, I mean, same, like you yeah, like have you an opera house in uh, New York. Uh, mm -hmm. So one other question I have in the, your life career, it doesn't matter you dance in a Birmingham in Royal or somewhere. How important wa was for you to work with choreographer? Because in the, my life in the Bolshoi, I really don't have chance to work with choreographer. And in the nineties, when I um, start uh, traveling and when, when suddenly I have second passport and I'm traveling around the world, it was Kenneth Macmillan, first choreographer with I meet and work in the studio. It was Prince of Pagodas. I mean, even most difficult ballet I danced in my life. So, and I remember this, uh, so they say, oh, Kenneth comes late, much late, so you need to learn just steps. But he really come in the first rehearsal, and then wow. all this time he stay with us. You know why it was so important for me. And he look at me and he maybe, I, I don't know that uh, exactly what he changed, what he not, but I remember what he said to me, how I need to use his choreographer to look good for me you know what what is incredible when you work with choreographer when you learn something from dvd or something it's not the same but to work with choreographer it's amazing so you have chance to work with choreographer a lot i think so yeah tell me please no it is it's true and it's and and that's what i want to give our dancers now is that opportunity to work with the choreographers that are of today you know because i was lucky i i worked with ashton um, and so when I was very young in the company, um, he used to come and, you know, do his ballets, but, but then they decided to revive an older ballet of his, a short ballet, uh, it was called Bolz Noble Sentimental, and it hadn't been done for like 30 years. So I was in the studio, I was one of, there was four boys in it, and I was one of the boys, and I was in the studio every day with him, you know, with Frederick Ashton for... I don't believe this, you are not that... You look great. You are not that old. <laughs> it was. It was probably about my second year in the company, so it was probably about eighty six. Oh my god! So yeah. that was amazing. And then Kenneth, really, one of my first opportunities was Kenneth. He 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 did a ballet called the Quartet and chose me to do. The, I was second caster, the, the one of the main parts, and and so that's when I started getting to work with him, which was. I, I did find he, he was very, I was always nervous of him, you know, because he used to sometimes have the dark glasses on and he would sit there. <laughs> and, and of course I was in awe, but he was really kind to me and, and gave me a lot of opportunities and then doing the Romeo with him. And then in the later years working, you know, and of course most of the productions of the classics I did were Peter Wright. So of course always with Peter. And then, um, and then with David Bintley, you know, and I did a lot of his ballets and especially in my last, you know, when I, before I stopped, I did a lot of the big, his dramatic works and they were really, really fun to do. And, and I think by that stage, you know, when you get a bit older, you're a little bit uh, freer and, and you enjoy it more in a way, you know, and you're less bothered you know the most important thing is to tell the story and to to bring the audience with you on the journey you know? and yeah and so i enjoyed all those ballets i did with him some of them were really my last ever full-length ballet we went to new york on tour so i thought this was a good time to stop and i did edward the second which was a wow. really big story but it's, yeah. it was a great piece to do you know, this is uh, now you are a directing company. I just say to you, it's, uh, I have fantastic memory about uh, this uh, beautiful house, um, uh, Royal Opera House, and uh, all these people I met there. And uh, of course, Kennedy, it was my first, first big experience in my life. Mm, and Monica Messon and um, Parker, who was she was teaching. Yes. And I mean, a lot of Dolin, 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 
Anthony Dowell was directing that time company. Of course, uh, I really enjoy to do any, any, everything I do. I do Ashton there, first time also in my life. Quite lucky I was to do dance uh, with Royal Ballet. Now you are directing company. What do you think? Are you changed something? Because it's tra that traditional company, you know, they have lots of background. So are you change something? Are you do, or you continue to just improve company the other way? What is your um, job? I think yeah it's, it's, a, it's a really good point and i think we are very lucky as a company because you know of course we have the big classics and then we have this heritage of ashton and macmillan you know so many good works that you want to perform but i did feel just before monica uh finished as director uh we had we did uh, christopher wielden's first full-length ballet which was alice's adventures in wonderland which yeah. has yeah. now become a big hit you know but that was the first new full-length ballet the Royal Ballet had done for 17 years. And I was just like, gosh, that feels like we're slightly behind in, in the world. You know, we should be, we've been lucky enough with having Ashton, with having Macmillan, to have ballets that are always pushing us a little bit forward, as well as, in, you know, acknowledging our heritage. Mm -hmm. And so it was really an aim that I would really not focus, forget everything, but have a focus on some bringing more new work to the company. And so since I took over, which is now eight years, we've done how many? Uh, I think we have something like, well, uh, three, four new, brand new full length works, three new ballet productions of big length works and then I don't know maybe 20 or 30 one act ballets so it's and and I think it really helps to create that excitement for the company it doesn't mean that they don't want to do Romeo and Juliet or uh, yeah, yeah. Day, but it just both of them work together and I, I I always say I was speaking to somebody the other day and interestingly you know even working with very different choreographers for somebody like um, with Wayne McGregor, um, when we did his ballet, he, a new full length ballet around Virginia Woolf. And one of the dancers, a, a gorgeous uh, Japanese ballerina, and she, was, she wasn't a principal then, she was like a soloist. And she was doing this ballet by Wayne McGregor, very different, very modern. But there was something in the way she did it that made me go, she's gonna be a great Giselle. And so then the next season, I put her on Giselle and she was fantastic. And then she became a principal dancer. And it's because working with a choreographer and new work, they can bring something out of a dancer that then they can take to Swan Lake, they can take to Giselle, they can take to Manon, all those ballets. And I think it helps. And as you said about work, you know, working with the choreographer, you know, they will work with you. They will say, oh, yeah, that's gorgeous, Nina. But if you do that more for yourself, that will work even better, you know. And to have that relationship is really important. Amazing, of course. So, you know, I always say this is, of course, with classical bass. With classical bass, you can do anything. But in uh, my generation, we was afraid because we don't have chance to work with choreographer to do modern stuff. We don't learn this modern in the school. But I'm 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 absolutely with you to this point. I also have this experience. My even from core girl was very very, you know, bad in the classical. And suddenly choreographer taking him out. She was doing modern, and after this, my God, she was dancing much better in the classic, you know, but yes. like, became like soloist. So this yeah. is really, really important to give a young one uh, this possibility. But tell me, please, other question I have. Uh, what do you think in the company today, this is important to have several choreographer permanently, like guest choreographer, or it doesn't matter, you can invite it, uh, because in London it's a little bit different than other houses. Mm -hmm. so what yeah, I'm, a, I'm greedy, I want both. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so at this moment now we have Wayne McGregor and as resident choreographer and Christopher Wielden as uh, artist and, uh, artistic, what do we call him? Artistic associate, I always forget. What we, so they are really our two house choreographers now. 
and then we and then every season I love to invite somebody new. So just before we closed, we had Kathy Marston uh, did a new ballet for us, a, a, a long a one act ballet. Um, Kathy's had a relationship with the company over the years, but that was her first big ballet. But over the over my time, we've had Offer Schechter, we've had uh, Sidi Larvey, uh, Crystal Pines, David Dawson, you know, the list goes. And so I think every year it's really nice to bring in somebody that doesn't know the company. But I do think um, that when a, when a choreographer knows the dancers well, he can really, or she can bring out so much in those dancers. And, you know, I, I love seeing other companies doing Wayne's work. And maybe I'm a little biased, but I do think when you see our dancers, they know him so well. They do look extraordinary in these big ballets. Yeah, you know, this is, uh, you, I think it's, you're, you are really lucky because uh, this is our problem, I mean, especially now because I'm directing in Georgia. It's so difficult for us to keep in more, like several choreographer permanently because it's about money, payment, or something. Of course, I invite it, uh, like, uh, for, but why I ask this question? Because sometimes when artistic director is choreographer themselves, they don't like it to invite the other one. You know? yeah. <laughs> so. Exactly. And I think, I think, <laughs> I, I, both because I'm not a choreographer, but I think like yourself as well, I think it, it's important. It, it's when you've got a, a, like a national company, I think it's probably better that you're not the choreographer as well, because we do have to think about the bigger picture of dance and, and, you know, of course, there's great companies, you know, that are run by choreographers, you know, John Neumeyer in Hamburg or something like that. You know, of course, an incredible, you wouldn't want it any different. But I think when it's the, the sort of the national company, I think it's easier if you can be not the choreographer and then bring people in. Yeah, you know, I, I really, uh, I, I'm, I do like versions, you know, classical versions. I, I'm stage, I'm Laurentia. By the way, uh, now it comes to my mind. I know in the Royal Ballet, very, very long times ago, uh, Nuriev staged this, uh, Vartan Chabukianis Laurentia, and company was... Oh, yes. there. And I was a little bit sad when I heard about it, but really a lot of people don't know this was Vartan Chabukianis choreographer, you know? And he was um, dancing himself, and it was Soviet time, it was no copyright, and like this, so... And uh, this is one of uh, beautiful ballet, in a classical ballet, but with Spanish style. So, and I'm so happy now I do this revival, and we have now in, the, in our company. And I was looking, I want really much to invite it, uh, Carlos Acosta, when he was dancing in, with Royal Ballet, to do his Otello. Because oh, yes. it's a stage wonderful hotel of Achtang Chabukiani. And Carlos promised me, promised me, but somehow it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what I want to say to you, because Rudolf Nuriev, it was, I mean, all world knows him, like, um, he's like one of genius um, uh, dancer. Do you see him in the live on stage? Do you think? Rudolf Nuriev, do you see him in the live on stage? Yes, yes. Can I, I haven't got a time to tell you my one story. Sure, so, this is very important. <laughs> so, this is a silly story, but I, I'll be quick. But when I was at the school, and as I said to you, I was quite small. But you know, as in your last year, you, I, as a student, you, you work with the company. You know, mm -hmm. so you, um, so you, in Manon, I pour the drinks or, you know, whatever, and all of those things. And uh, so we did a ballet, because Rudolf had come back to the ballet and was dancing and choreographing, and he did the Tempest. And so I learned the call the ballet of the Tempest, but there was also this moment where um, he had, it was, he was playing Prospero, and he had to walk across, he went off stage, and then he stood on this person's shoulders, and walked across the stage as if he'd grown bigger and he was being dramatic, you know, the magic of Prospero. Anyway, the boy who was, was very tall, who he stood on his shoulders, and he didn't realize there was a matinee performance. And so he didn't turn up. And so they're all 
going crazy. The show was about to start. And so they just went, you, to me, you're going to have to carry Rudolf Nureyev across with him standing like this on your shoulders. And I had a cloak over me. I could see like this much. I don't think I've ever been so nervous in my whole life. I was like, what happens if I drop <laughs> Rudolf Nureyev? And I walked across it. And they told him, and afterwards he came and, and said, thank you very much, and you did a good job. And he actually, um, I had a book of his, and so he wrote on it um, to Kevin, uh, I, I think he just said to Kevin, best wishes Rudolph or something. And so when we opened our first night of Swan Lake, this new production, and Badim Muntagirov was uh, doing the lead, I gave him that book. I said, oh. that's your present. That's from my era to the next era passing down. So, But it was an amazing moment to be there with Rudolf Nureyev. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting. <laughs> I also met him personally in New York first and then in Canada. He was a very, very interesting person. I'm not working with him, but he tried to make some... He comes to rehearse... Uh, for our rehearsal with Andres with New York City Ballet, where he has Balaji. And he'd like point a little bit and then we go to restaurant, Russian tea room. And it was really, I just, I think I already said this story with somebody. So, and it was, uh, it was very funny. I was afraid to ask him, not afraid, but I was shy to ask him to, can he sign something for me? You know, like, because I'm, first time I see live Rudolf, and it was 88, it was still, still Russia was not so open. And everything, you know, I thought, oh my God, if somebody watching us, so we are together, you know, it was really like that. Yeah. So, and then taxi driver, when we, we stopped the car and we go out to restaurant, taxi driver said, Mr. Rudolph, please just sign my dollars. And Rudolph signed dollars and it was like, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's stardom, isn't it? Yeah, it that was really, uh, oh. So yeah. it was really, really funny to spend a little time with him. Yeah. Mm. I was sad when I was at the, at the company, uh, at the school, he was already, it was the later years of his time, you know, because it was, I, I joined the school in 77, so he really, he was guesting, but he wasn't at his peak, which was in the 60s. But I mean, he changed so much for us, for the Royal Ballet, I mean, he was, I mean, he, as much as anybody, was really the catalyst to help us to grow as a company. Uh, yeah, yeah, he, I, it's definitely so, this fact, this fact. Uh, mm, I mean, we don't talk about Rudolf, we don't talk about you. Uh, and tell me, please, do you have some favorite choreographer you can say it was uh, in the, your lifetime, was easy to work or you just uh, named everybody, you already named everybody with whom you're working? Or you have some rules, what you think this was, uh, something special for you, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think probably um, at the end, the the Edward the Second was a really great role because uh, David had originally choreographed it for um, uh, Stuttgart Ballet. Yes. And then and then when he became director, he brought it over. So I was the first person away from Stuttgart to dance it, and it was really a special. A, a, a very interesting, you know, it's a little bit like, you know, Myling in the sense that the, yes. the male character is the one that drives the whole story. And, and so it's, it was really interesting. But I think going sort of on that story of choreographers, what I find in, found interesting as well was having choreographers in the room. And sometimes you were probably never second cast, but sometimes when you were second cast, and you, you were, you know, and of course you'd be a bit disappointed you're not the original cast or, of a ballet, a new ballet. But, and I say it to the dancers now, and I think sometimes I don't know if they believe me, but I say it's really great sometimes if you're second cast, because if you, the choreographer is in the room, because you can watch from a di slightly from a distance. And when you're, you know, and you see, you Come see what yes, uh huh. Yeah. Like you this see what so we yeah. Can... If I go too far away, <laughs> yeah. You really see what the choreographer is his or her intention is. Whereas when you're the original cast and you're working with them, you're so busy trying to do it 
that sometimes you don't quite see. And sometimes I've, I've thought I was better when I was the second cast because I could see what was going on and how he wanted to tell the story and how that worked. Whereas when, when you've got no idea, you've got nothing to compare it with. So you're just, and it can be great and it can be you, but sometimes it's interesting to have seen how to play a character. And so I really enjoyed that. And I, we worked with a lot of young choreographers, people like, you know, William Tucker when they were young, Graham Lustig, um, Jennifer Jackson, you know, lots of young choreographers when Peter was the director of the company. Kevin, and, uh, you want what I want to tell you? I never be first cast in my life at the Bolshoi, ever. Even I was like fifth cast, or oh, I don't know. But <laughs> this is, does the change in my life. Yes, no. this is true. And you're absolutely right. Even sometimes when I was guesting, I don't like it to dance first night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always say, when I'm dancing, this is my night. This is my yes. first night. And I never ever have problem of this, oh my God, fighting with first cast, never. Yes. So, I mean, I was just first cast when Ratmansky staging something ballet for me, especially, mm -hmm. that, that was my first yes. cast. So <laughs> you're absolutely right. I also say to young dancers, you know, what does it mean first, second cast? It's your ballet, it's your cast, and you need to show you up. Sometimes third and fifth cast much more interesting or something. Or sometimes, you know, uh, choreographer choosing uh, because somebody's much quicker learning because we always don't have time. But yes. somebody, young one, maybe it's interesting to watch, you know, like, yes. so yeah. it's absolutely doesn't matter yeah. who guess you are. It's yeah. important when you go on stage, do your job. Yeah. I'm so happy you mentioned this. Yeah. Good, good. And it's interesting, somebody like Wayne McGregor always puts some young people in the back of the room. And of course, he's like this and he's always watching. And you see that he then goes, wow, that person looks good, you know, and, and people's careers have done so well because of that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and accidentally, I was dancing everywhere. I was jumping in the performance, first my small mm -hmm. leg. Even accidentally, I danced Raimonda in London with Bolshoi uh, when it was big tour in the 86 or 7. So I'm always mixed, mixed it, which, uh, which year it was. It's the first time I'm dancing my big ballet, Raimonda in London, accidentally. Nobody yeah. knows me who I am. And I was dancing, and that's it. Next day, all newspaper was writing about me and uh, mm -hmm. since that anytime i go to london it was like i feel like it was my city you know <laughs> this is special place yeah i think that's the same with you know natalia with us you know that's now with us natalia sipova you know when she was in in i don't know whether she'd done so much in russia but then she she danced in london with the bolshoi and that's really was the place that embraced her you know as a, as a as an artist and and that's why she's so I, I think has a special place for London you know and it works well you know yeah so uh, let let me ask you one other question what I'm also interesting are you a strong uh, person with dancer or how you deal with dancer you know because <laughs> when I'm taking this job I'm spoke with my friends like Kevin McKenzie, Frank Anderson, Ben Stevenson, I mean, uh, Paul Padolsky from Norway, Dina Byrne. I, so everybody who was that time directing company. So because I was nervous, I was ballerina dancing around the world. And, and I need to take it this awards, how? So and all of them, this, uh, they are saying me one thing. So now I don't say what they tell me, but I, my interest is what, what is more difficult? when you are directing company for you? For me, even though I wasn't, I wasn't unaware because I, you know, I'd been working closely with Monica Mason in the other side, you know, as administrative director, I, it's, it's, I, it's the personal um, interaction with each person because I love the interaction, <laughs> but it's, it's I care about them, but of course I have to make the decision on what they're going to do in their career and what in their roles and all of that. And I, 
when you look from a side, you go, oh, of course, that person should do that and that should do that. But when you really know the dancers and you want them to do well, but you have to make those tough decisions, that is the hardest, I think. I think that's the hardest for me. Absolutely. You are in the hour club. <laughs> <are> Good. <laughs> yeah, because like we say in the paper, we're writing everything correctly, wonderful, looks great. And then uh, it's somebody out, somebody done, everything crashed down. Then you personally talk. Yes, absolutely. This is more because uh, this is position, what we have, decision and also uh, responsible, right? So you yeah. need to be responsible for everything you do. Something goes bad in the stage, it's your responsible. Somebody does bad, it's your responsible. So of course, when we are dancers, we are not thinking like this. We're thinking everybody for ourselves, just yes. for ourselves. And it's also difficult for me to, to explain them something. They're thinking they are right, mm -hmm. but they don't see your side, you know? So yeah. why you do this? Why you make it this decision? And this is most difficult to explain them sometimes. So why you do this and why you do that? And uh, not because they are bad or you don't like it, them or something. This is really, really... It's the bigger <laughs> picture, isn't it? Trying to explain the bigger picture of, yeah. of what it takes and, and how, how it works, you know, and the reasons why, you know? And I think, yeah, it is, it's really... And, and it takes a lot of energy, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. Energy, and then sometimes I don't sleep a few days to, if I want to talk with somebody, I'm, I was, I'm really nervous because I like it, all of them. They're like my children. I'm 15 years, I'm raising a new generation. And it's so difficult to talk to old generation. How you do this? How you <gasps> change generation? It's it's tough. I have to say, it is. I've, there's there has sometimes been difficult conversations. I think. I think in the end, though, I think if you know what we've had in the you know this gen, we've got now a, a fantastic new generation of dancers mm -hmm. in the company, and I think uh, and I think they match well with the the senior dancers. And at this stage, I think if people are. If people can see that things are being done in an honest and open way and there, you know, there is talent there, I think people are more accepting. Of course, it's always hard when you're looking at, you know, your career is coming to a close and you're having to move on. But I think if you, if, if you've always had the people that you're working with an honest and open relationship, I think... I think in the end, that's what helps you to get through that difficult time, really. And, and I was really, I was very lucky when I thought about stopping dancing and, and changing career. A lot of people helped me saying, oh, have you tried this? Maybe you should go here and learn about management. And I went to the Royal Shakespeare Company or I went to Rombert Dancing. So I did lots of different things. And so I try and encourage that now with the, dancers that are at that stage in their careers so that they they feel that they're supported yeah you know this is uh, i i think you are still keep it in royal ballet different generation right and uh, some old generation are they coming to dance other roles or play other roles old generation you still keeping like this Yes, I think it's very important. I, I love that we have a, a rank of character principal dancers and they're fantastic. And you know, when, you, when they come on stage, you understand who they are. They've got such uh, depth and weight and, of character and, and, you know, those big ballets like the, the classics, but also the big Macmillan ballets, you know, Lady Capulet, Lord Capulet, all those, uh, you know, the the empress in in uh, in uh, miling all those roles. Yeah. And that, you know, it's so important. Rather than looking like a young person just trying to be, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is absolutely, I, I think this is absolutely wonderful when young generation at least see, I mean, maybe principal dancer, but they are play roles because this theater. In, in, Ru in Russia, it was like this. And then uh, during the my period, it was near this period. So always young dancer was dancing everything because we are touring, we are traveling. It was always difficult to take it one more people, one more person. So, but I think for young generation, it's more important. So they are no, on stage stay this kind of people to show them 
their goods yes. and learn from them. Yeah. This is absolutely wonderful. But this is uh, when generation is changed, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. And you have yeah. contract or you have pension after their, or you have pension, so when they finish their life, uh, ballet life or not? No, no, we have a, we, we, there is a dancer's pension, but that doesn't come until they're 55. So a long time. So what we do have though is a very good thing called the dancer's career development. And all the companies in, in the United Kingdom, in the UK, pay into that um, fund. And so when you're thinking about uh, dancing, you can talk to them about maybe retraining and they will help fund that. So that is really good. And they encourage now, and we encourage people to do things even while they're dancing. So you can do maybe a, a course in administration or whatever you're interested in while you're still dancing. It's tough because, you know, a dancer's life is busy and tiring and hard, but it's, it's to try and get people as ready as they can. And they even have, it's really good they have like uh, uh, people that were maybe ex-dancers that have now gone into sort of counseling and mentoring. So just that you can freely go and talk to them and say, oh, I'm not sure what I really want to do and have conversations for people that really understand what it's like to have been a dancer. Because that's how important. Kevin, I, uh, are you teaching yourself? No. <laughs> I don't do ballet. Not, not class. I enjoy going into the studio and coaching. Okay. So I love that. I don't have as much time as I'd like to do it. But, and I sort of, I, you know, and I try and do sometimes with the youngest ones coming through that are doing the role for the first time. Mm -hmm. and uh and then and then some of the senior ones i i love working with marinella or you know and uh it's great you know, to do that um but uh yeah this just before we started we were doing on jaegen and uh reed came to coach uh until the first night uh but then i looked after the one whole cast of them um you know so the all four characters and even did some other other calls with the olders and mentees and things so it's and it's very special you know and especially when you you start from the very beginning and go through and then see them you know make their debut I, I, it's really great so but there's never there's never enough time you know as you know as well and i, do I you do coaching you know not every day of course like this but sometimes i'm uh, rehearsing if i take it somebody so sometimes i i like you say, young ones. So I coach like Sleeping Beauty or Giselle or some scenes. Uh, I mean, in classes also, not permanently, but uh, I like it coach, of course, in classes because sometimes you are doing your way and you are wanted to show them what you like. So, but it's like like you, this administration work also makes busy more than yeah. I love to spend time in the studios, really. But like dress rehearsals or rehearsals on stage, of course, uh, I'm doing with choreographers. Yeah, I, and that I enjoy with the new ballets, you know, like with the choreographers. And I don't sit in the studios when they're really creating. But as soon as we get towards the stage, I come to the studio and then I'm with them all the way so that they can help, you know, and, and just somebody that they can talk to and, and maybe say some ideas, you know, and, and see how that works. You know, it was so fun. Ben Hughes was staging Balanchine to us. And um, I say, Ben, you know, I don't want to come to studio to every day, even I'm so interested because I don't want to, um, you know, make you a little bit uh, dance or something because, um, you know, when you are there, little bit different and they yes. said no 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 come come no problem and when i came in the studio and ben is rehearsing very quiet you know like no something very very quiet no and i'm so emotionally and if i see something this girl was doing wrong i shout i say what are you doing you are so <laughs> I say to you and you continue to do and then i look at you but Ben, do you understand why I don't want to come to studio? <laughs> and he says, okay, Nina, don't come. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't explain to watch that quiet yeah. with somebody yeah, doing like this. 
Yes, yes. Right. The tape like, on okay, the okay, I understand why you don't want to come. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is because I have this emotional school. So my old teacher yeah. very emotional. Mm. Uh, I mean, thank you. It was very interesting to hear a lot of things. And what you want to say? Because uh, I know this is I ask to everybody, but really we. We want to say something to young one. We want to say something to our colleagues, especially today, this is the period. So what do you want to have like a message? What kind of message, message you want to say in the ballet world, let's say? In the ballet world. I mean, I, 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 I do feel that, you know, we are going through a really tough time, but I do think through all of this, people realize how important art is and how much it brings to our lives and and the shared experience of that as well coming together to to watch something or coming together to create something and i think both of those have really really um come to light at this time it's wonderful to watch the videos and see what people are doing but it isn't the same it isn't the same as as coming together as an audience and watching wonderful art and and vice versa for the dancers. And I think for the young dancers, I, th I think they will probably feel um, nervous about what the future will hold. And I think, I think we, we need to say for them to be patient. I think patience will be a, a great thing because when you're young, you're so hungry. And uh, to be patient, and I always say to young dancers, always don't, um, don't put yourself against somebody else. Mm. Always do it for yourself. Exactly. To do, to to compare yourself to yourself. You know, was I am I better today than I was yesterday? You know, is this that not? Oh, that person over there is 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 better than me, or not as good as me, or getting the parts, or not getting the part. It's very much. It has to be about your career and yourself. Yes. Thank you so much. Exactly. I mean, when three months uh, dancers, I mean, around the world, uh, it was there was in their home and do, and sometimes they don't have space, you know, so especially in Georgia. I think all of them appreciate it now to come back to see it, to work in the big studios. And this is, oh my God, thank you. So we are back in the studio. This is one is really, really important. And I think also, you, if you agree me, so now when we will go, uh, to the theater to perform even more we needed audience support even yes. more we needed so people can come on stage and uh, not just on stage but uh, the theater to watch uh, because we need to show to everybody how important is art how important for them and for us to be together and uh, thank you so much you sharing this wonderful time with me and um, god bless you all best to you success patience and we look forward to see each other meet each other and even maybe we can work together that would be wonderful and it's been so lovely to talk to you and it's really been a, a lot you know as i said dancing with you was a highlight of of the of my career but also having this is a highlight of of the week so lovely to spend time with you thank it you is. so much good luck good luck and a big hello from me to your colleagues lots of people still working there and i know them personally big thank you for that time we're spending together yeah. good luck and bye again good luck lots of love to the company too thank you thank you, thank you.